horrific attack on a big customer using an ATM machine. A man entered the vestibule with an axe and then began brutally attacking the customer. The victim survived and is in the hospital. Amber Cagliano with some important reminders on how to stay safe at the ATM. And we have to warn you, some may find this video disturbing. We've all been there. You're at a cash machine. A stranger is hovering right behind you. But look, he's holding a hatchet. Out of nowhere, he attacks the customer. The stunned victim tries to shield himself. On and on it goes. It's too disturbing to show it all. The frenzy over. The crazed attacker smashes the cash machines and throws the hatchet away as he leaves. The nightmare happened at a bank in New York's financial district. It's easy to see why a customer at a cash machine can be a tempting target. You're in an enclosed space, your back is turned, and you're probably alone. And the bad guy knows you're there to get money. Now, you're at the ATM. Inside Edition security consultant Steve Cardian says there are steps you can take when you take money out of a cash machine. Your safety begins outside. You want to make sure that there's nobody lurking about. You want to look inside, peek inside before you go in, make sure there's not somebody in there sleeping, somebody in there. Uh, uh, Tonight, there's heartache for a family of a seven-year-old girl who was found dead in the Bronx on Tuesday. So far, no one's been charged. CBS 2's Thalia Perez says the girl's father, who is desperate to know what happened. So that we win, does he love me? And I was the best dad. I don't feel my baby. Julius Batis cries as he describes his last phone call with his seven-year-old daughter, Julicia Batis, who died Tuesday at her home where she lived with her mother and brothers. She was crying out for help. Nobody did nothing for my baby. And I just want justice for my baby. Batty says his daughter moved in with his mom, her grandmother, when she was just five days old. She lived in Crown Heights with her grandmother up until March of last year, when her mom won custody and she moved to the Mitchell houses in the Bronx. Police confirm that they've responded to more than a dozen domestic violence calls and complaints at the home. It's not known, though, if those calls came before or after March. Then on Tuesday, police say Julicia's lifeless body was found with blunt force trauma to her stomach and trauma to her face and arms. I have fought. I have did fair hearings. I have did interviews. They told me I had to do an independent review. The circumstances surrounding the Administration for Children's Services' decision to return Julicia to her mother's custody is unclear. ACS is prohibited from speaking about the specifics of this case, but did say, our top priority is protecting the safety and well-being of all children in New York City. We are investigating this case with the NYPD. But Davis maintains that ACS should have never removed her granddaughter from her home in the first place because she says she'd still be alive. They have failed me, my son. They have also failed my granddaughter big time. The family tells us they are now planning final arrangements for Julicia. This while the NYPD says so far no arrests have been made. In Crown Heights, Elia Perez, CBS 2 News.
finding a suspect they say broke into a woman's home and assaulted her. Investigators say it happened around 6 in the evening of August 7th in a building near Knickerbocker Avenue and Grove Street. The victim told police she was in her apartment when the man came through her front door, sexually assaulted her, punched her, and hit her with a chair. Anyone with any information about who this person is is asked to call NYPD Crime Stoppers at 1-800-577-TIPS. Katie Johnston for CBSN New York. Police say this man tried to rape a woman in the Bronx, and now they hope somebody recognizes him. Investigators say he approached a 37-year-old woman on East 163rd Street and Teller Avenue, then forced her into an apartment building, tried to take off her clothes and rape her. The woman scratched his face, and he punched her in the face and stomach and ran off with her phone. She was taken to the hospital and was listed as stable. If you recognize the man in this video, call NYPD's Crime Stoppers hotline at one 800 577 tips. Katie Johnston for CBSN New York. Now new this morning, a 64-year-old man is recovering after police say he was brutally beaten in Brooklyn. Investigators released this video of the attack. It happened just after 6 p.m. yesterday near Eldred Street and Wyckoff Avenue in Bushwick. Police say the suspect choked, slapped, and punched the 64-year-old after an argument. The victim was taken to Wyckoff Hospital where he was treated for swelling and bruising. Investigators say the suspect took off in a red Mercedes. Now to some breaking news out of the Bronx, where police are investigating a deadly shooting inside a bodega in Fordham Manor. According to investigators, a man walked in and shot a 21-year-old man several times before taking off. The victim died after being rushed to a hospital. Police believe the victim may have been targeted. But first, bullets fly at a Charlotte gas station. Video just released to Fox 46 shows just how close a shootout came to becoming deadly. Thanks for joining us. I'm Lindsey Klein. And I'm Brian Blakely. As a result, an employee told Fox 46 he stays armed with his own AR-15 to protect himself and his co-workers. Fox 46's Will Lewis is live at CMPD headquarters tonight. And Will, the co-workers, they're thankful this didn't end up a lot worse. Yeah, they sure are, Brian. You saw in that video, one man had to jump out of the way of a bullet, and an employee tells us that a bullet almost punctured a gas line. And that same employee we spoke to says, this needs to stop. This is how the interaction between two groups ends as gunfire erupts at the pumps of the B&K Gas and More store on Glenwood Drive in Charlotte. To be honest with you, uh, I was in the Egyptian army. So that was nothing. But let's rewind how it all started on August 6. A group of men walking towards the store get into a verbal altercation with men in a car at a gas pump. Check this out. One of the men pulls out a long gun, either an AK-47 or AR-15, ready to fire. The man puts the gun away and then speaks to the men in the gray car. Assistant manager Mohammed Abdel Raham says, unfortunately, he's seen this before. Uh, there have been five robberies on me. One put AR-15 on me at night and the other put the firearm on my head. Inside the store, surveillance photos show what appears to be an argument. One group walks out and towards the back of the parking lot. Then the next group. Just as the three men approach the car, shots are fired. And one so close, you see the man in a white t-shirt jump out of the way before hitting the ground. I tried to be hidden behind that wall in order to avoid the, the bullets. Then I pulled the, the, uh, the panic button. And it was two groups shooting back and forth at each other. Fortunately, nobody was injured or killed in this incident. Six days later, there's still a bullet hole in the wall, shattered glass in another area, and scared employees. I think we took it because it's a, it's a bullet. <laughs> you know, it's AK-47. It's a, like a war. Police are looking for the men who fired the shots. Until then... Mohammed Abdul Raham says he will protect himself and his co workers. I have my rifles. See, AR 15. So I, I, when it gets dark here, I pull it out because I know this area. Yeah, not only do they know that area, the clerk tells us that the owner had actually thought about buying bulletproof vests for employees as they were working. Now, as for the investigation, CMPD says if you recognize anyone in that video, to call Crime Stoppers. We're live in Uptown, Will Lewis, Fox 46.
Hey guys, so I want to tell you about this company, Semper. Which... An adult were found dead inside a New Jersey hotel today. The bodies were discovered inside a room at the OYO Motel off Route 10 in East Hanover, New Jersey. Images from CBS2 News Chopper show Morris County investigators at the scene. Police have not been able to tell us their identities or ages. How they died is also not yet known, but the county prosecutor's office says there is no danger to the public. Investigators say a Queens man was shot and killed after confronting a driver who crashed into his car. CBS 2's Natalie Dudridge reports from Richmond Hill, where she spoke with the victim's heartbroken family. I shot my son last night. I don't know why. The father of 24-year-old Anthony Ali is still trying to process the death of his son, killed in what police believe was a shooting fueled by road rage. He told his parents he was coming home to walk his new puppy. My son is a very good guy. Come home. And he said that he's coming back. He said, okay, mommy, I'm on my way home. Officers say Ali was driving near 89th Avenue and 116th Street around 10 p.m. when the driver of a black Infiniti sedan hit the back of his car. Investigators say Ali had words with the driver, who then pulled out a handgun. Police say he tried to drive off but was shot in the face and chest and crashed into a light pole. His friend called me and said somebody shot Anthony. And the cops is on the way. Here for the then they said, I asked what happened. And they said that how the guy hit Anthony Carr from the back and the side and shot Anthony. Police say a male passenger was in the car but not hurt. This morning, a friend showed up to the scene, lost for words. He was a good kid. Like, I mean, he wasn't really bothering nobody. He used to just try to promote his jewelry. His uncle says he loved fashion and cars and just bought his car a few months ago. I, I lose my nephew 24 years old. Our mayor needs to do something about this. Too many, too many, too, 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 too many guns. I miss my son very much. I don't know how am I going to live without him. Police say the suspect took off in a black Infiniti sedan with possible front end damage. They're asking anyone who might recognize that vehicle or who has any tips to give police a call. In Richmond Hill, Queens, Natalie Dudridge, CBS 2 News. I cannot tolerate him because he always used to treat her abusively. Jenny Sakapuya tells Pix11 she knew George Lazo would eventually hurt her sister, Ada Mayancella. She says the couple would always argue, but their words escalated to domestic violence. They always be having an, an issue, arguing, fighting. But Sunday night, police say Lazo's actions almost cost Mayancella her life. They claim he punched her so hard, knocked her to the ground here at 108th Street and 41st Avenue in Corona. Then the 33-year-old was run over by a car. She's now in a coma. We actually really need her. I cannot believe this, what, what was happening to her, and I cannot believe that she's in there in the hospital. That's only half of the tragedy. Mayancella is a mother of six children who are now left to fend for themselves. They range from 19 to three months in age and are now staying with relatives. They also need all the help they can get. Some help is on the way. PIX11 is there as the NYPD's Community Affairs Rapid Response Team shops for the family. They get everything from food to diapers and other essential items. We try to help people out the best way we can when they're in unfortunate situations. Uh, we just try to make it that they feel as comfortable as possible. The team also offers the family other resources, including some emotional support offered to all victims of domestic violence. We are here to provide you any assistance that you may need. While they are getting some help, they need more. This family is afraid, as long as Lazo is still on the streets. Anyone, anyone that sees him, please call the cops right away. And right now the mother is in critical condition at a hospital. Her children are praying that she will pull through. In the meantime, take another look. This is George Lazo. Police need your help finding him. If you have any information on his whereabouts, call Crime Stoppers. The number's right there. It's 800-577-TIPS. For now, we're live in Corona, Queens. Nicole Johnson, Pix11 News.
10 are hospitalized after being shot in Brooklyn overnight. Happened around midnight on Marcy Avenue in Bed-Stuy. Police say two or three people opened fire on the men before taking off. The victims were taken to Kings County Hospital, where they are expected to survive. No arrests have been made. Police are searching for three suspects in connection with a brutal attack in the Bronx. Surveillance video shows the moments leading up to the attack. It happened back on August 4th on Prospect Avenue in Woodstock. Police say the three suspects hit the 34-year-old victim with a wrench and then slashed him before repeatedly punching and kicking him, leaving him unconscious. The victim was treated for his injuries at a hospital and is expected to be okay. A motive for the attack is unclear. Now, into the rise in gun violence in New York City, the NYPD responding to multiple shootings overnight, including in Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn, where eight people were shot, four men, four women. Police say it happened just before 1230 this morning at a playground on DeKalb Avenue near Marcus Garvey Boulevard. All eight victims are listed as stable at area hospitals. The NYPD also responded to a shooting in Cypress Hills and two shootings in Queens, one in Ozone Park, the other in Laurelton. Sirens and gunshots, crime scene tape littering the streets of several neighborhoods in the city after a violent weekend. Between early Friday and this morning, 44 people were shot in 25 incidents. Eight of them were shot at a gathering in bed Brooklyn. News 4's Mark Santia joining us live in bed with what the NYPD says it's doing to curb this crime, Mark. And Natalie, you take a look around, you can see this is still an active scene. You see there are dozens of evidence markers on the ground, and there are dozens of victims in local hospitals. The aftermath of a bloody weekend across the city. Chaos at the Eleanor Roosevelt houses. Women and men loaded onto stretchers as first responders try to help eight victims wounded in a barrage of bullets. Firecrackers or gunshot noise, and it just... And then the helicopters came along. Daryl Walden saw the carnage outside his Brooklyn home. While this resident says he does not have all the answers to the surge and shootings, he does stress... We definitely don't need no defunding the police, that's for sure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, I think it's, it's, it's getting out of hand. The key is more gun arrests. We're at the highest level of gun arrests in 25 years. More cooperation between NYPD and community to get the information that PD needs for those prosecutions. As detectives search for clues, the NYPD's Community Affairs Rapid Response Team looks to build trust and calm fears after a weekend of violence and another mass shooting. But it's really important that we come out here and just calm people down after something like this tragic has happened in their neighborhood. Tackling the surging gun violence, Lieutenant Cherise Sanders says it's about police and community working together. We're here for them. We want their neighborhoods to be safe and just to, to help us help them. Back here at this scene, eight people were injured in the shooting. We're told all are expected to survive. Just got off the phone with police moments ago. They tell us the two gunmen, they're still on the loose. Police still searching for them at this hour. We're live in Bed-Stuy. I'm Mark Santia, News 4 New York. Meet George Philippe.